Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Tech Talk. I am your host, Jeff Hutzel, Chief Cloud Officer with Automax. So as you guys know, on Tech Talk, we talk to leaders in the IT field and subject matter experts in technology. They're doing really interesting things. We try and get their perspective on current events and trends that are happening in the industry. Uh, today, we've got a fantastic guest for coming to us from uh, Freehold, New Jersey. Uh, it's Greg Cyrilnik from Ruby's Costume Company. Greg, how you doing? Thanks for joining us. How are you? Nice to be here. Great. So, Greg, maybe from the top, uh, for folks that aren't familiar with, with Ruby's, I think we all are if we have kids that go out on Halloween and things like that, but maybe give us the overview of the company and kind of what you guys do. Sure, absolutely. So, Ruby's is a family-owned company. Uh, we've been around for 65-plus years, 70 years, uh, and we are the biggest designer, uh, manufacturer, and distributor of Halloween costumes and accessories. Uh, we have presence throughout the world, uh, predominantly in the United States, but also in China and Europe and Australia, um, you know, South America uh, and Canada. Um, and it's uh, one of the largest uh, product lines of generic and licensed costumes and accessories, uh, including makeup, shoe wear, hats, wigs, uh, novelty items. I mean, you name it, there's probably something for somebody um, in our product catalog. Yeah, that's awesome. Like my, my birthday is on Halloween, so it always holds a special place in my heart. That's my favorite holiday. So uh, we appreciate you guys and all the stuff you guys provide every year to make it a little more fun for everybody. So, so I want to ask you just with, with everything that's going on now with the COVID-19 crisis, you know, how has that affected you guys? How have you adapted, you know, during this time? Uh, well, it's, it's interesting that you should mention that. Um, so a lot of our production, uh, takes place overseas in China. And when the factory shut down in China, obviously that uh, did bring up some concerns. Um, and um, we've pivoted, you know, uh, as, as we, we do, um, as being one of the innovators in the industry, we pivoted, we started to focus on um, more um, PPE products, uh, hand sanitizers, and things of that nature, so we can continue being productive and um, efficient uh, and effective to our communities. Uh, but at the same time, uh, as many other manufacturers throughout the world, uh, we don't just focus on the now. So what we're actually working on is a year from now, right? We're working on a season that's in 2021. So a lot of the 2020 product is already um, in the door um, and in the warehouse or is on the way here. So production started you know, last year um, and uh, we've been producing, you know, full steam ahead. As soon as the factories in China got the green light to start producing and shipping, uh, of course, we were one of the first ones to start uh, shipping product into the United States, following all the safety guidelines, making sure that um, all of our product is safe, going through whatever safety measures that are necessary. Uh, to make sure that it's not only high quality, but also safe for our consumers. So, so Greg, it's interesting. So as a CIO of a company that's, that's well-established, you guys, like you said, have been in business for over 66 years, you know, especially it's a family-owned business. You know, for a lot of companies, there's that, there's that challenge of does business kind of stagnate after a while, especially when you're kind of leader of a market and you've been good at things for so long. Um, but you guys have done kind of the opposite. You guys have continued to innovate you know, look for new ways of doing business. How, how does that look in Ruby's? How do you guys kind of view the future and how you direct the business? Uh, well, we always look at the marketplace uh, and see what is trending, what is not, where are the gaps. And so when uh, companies retreat because of the market or um, negative impact uh, that it has on their sales or productivity, we actually step back and say, how can we uh, be better at what we do. So um, about four years ago, we started the global project um, and it is the global initiative project where we're looking to bring all of our technology that's at the core of Ruby's costume company uh, across all of our brands and all of our subsidiaries throughout the world, unifying um, the, the way we operate, the way we see our inventory across the globe, the way we see uh, data that's transparent to us. So we don't have to become um, reactive, we can be more responsive, right? So if there's a customer somewhere in, the, um, in Europe that 
um, has a need for for product that we may be out of stock in Europe, but we have in the United States or in China or in Australia. We don't have to um, jump the gun and, and start producing, but we can actually transfer that inventory from one segment of the company into another. Um, at the same time, we're looking for better tools to provide to our salespeople and to our wholesale and retail customers. Uh, for example, we recently introduced a wholesale platform um, uh, partnering with a company, New Order, that uh, it's web-based and it allows our wholesale partners to jump right on the portal, see all of our inventory, see all the products that are available down to the imagery and sizes and colors that it comes with, uh, see all the deliveries, uh, and be able to place an order for that product, which then seamlessly is integrated into our ERP system. So that added um, a number of different efficiencies because it automated some of these steps that were previously traditionally done by a human being. And it doesn't mean that we're eliminating jobs. It means that the people that were focused on the manual work before are now able to do that same work more efficiently and focus on things that matter versus on pushing keys on the keyboard. So that elevates our efficiency. That creates more room for us to grow. That leaves more time for people to be um, responsive to companies' needs and customers' needs versus just the day-to-day, -day, you know, minutia. Yeah, and that's so those are just a couple. Of yeah, I think that's interesting. I mean, you you guys have definitely talked about a lot of stuff you're doing that's that's giving an immediate return to the business, making them more efficient, making more technology friendly, um, you know, adding more value. But I know. There's a big component of you and your, kind of your personality is also focused on kind of the human experience, the user experience uh, side of the thing and keeping folks connected as well. Um, so how do you kind of balance the two of those? So making the organization more efficient and more productive and, and looking at things like big data, but at the same time not missing that kind of family-owned company, that personal connection, you know, in that side of the house as well. How do you balance those two? Um, that is very, very important, especially in a company of the size of Ruby's. So, uh, I mean, we've spread out all over the place. We have uh, three different offices just in New York area alone. So, um, in addition to me being a CIO for Ruby's, uh, I'm also a motivational speaker and a life coach. So, I bring a lot of that into my work. And um, communication with others within the company is extremely important because... You know, uh, as they say, take a, it takes a village. Um, and it's important to make sure that we're all kind of marching for the same beat on the drum, right? So we have developed things like the intranet um, and other communication tools. Um, I am, um, we, we heavily rely on email, but it's also, you know, the, the conferencing and the uh, staying in touch with um, different teams and groups uh, especially now that we are mostly all working remotely, right? So it's connecting with your teams. Um, I believe in over-communicating, right? And the reason that I believe that is that, you know, there's no such thing as too much information, right? There's no such thing as um, reaching out to your teammates, to the people that you work with, and, and um, telling them um, how grateful you are for um, all the the hard work that they're doing. I mean, it's challenging right now, right? We're, we're all disconnected in some shape or form. And it is challenging for many people to work in a silo uh, where they're used to being in an office and talking to one another and going down you know, the hall and just to ask a question or picking up a phone. And now they don't have that luxury. So um, I believe in that connection. And um, many of the managers um, and senior leadership in the company uh, believes in that as well. So we are continuously reaching out to our people. Uh, we have um, standard scheduled meetings and conferences and then Zoom meetings where we all jump online and see each other and say hello and, you know, um, iterate, iterate as managers how grateful we are for our teams and how great they're of a job that they're doing. Uh, it's important. It's, it really is important. Whether you are in, you know, Long Island, New Jersey, you know, China, uh, UK, or Australia, uh, it's important to, to retain that human connection. Yeah, I think it's good. It's interesting, our company as well, there's no substitute for that face-to-face that -face interaction, but I think we have, uh, we've taken some steps to do those company-wide Zoom meetings and virtual happy hours and things like that, and it's, it's interesting. You are yeah. seeing uh, 
there are some benefits to that. You're kind of getting a glimpse inside people's homes. You're getting to see them in a different light than you normally would in the office. So there's, you know, there's pros and cons to it, but I think it's definitely uh, opening people's eyes up uh, to some of their coworkers and, and helps them relate to them a little bit more, still having that access, even though we're all remote. But so Greg, I have a question for you. So you mentioned you're a life coach. I think that's awesome. So if people out there want to connect with you and want to find out more about, about you and some of the services you offer, as well as Ruby's, where can they go to, to find out some more information? So in regards to Rubies, uh, you can find most of the information on our website at www.rubies.com. Um, you can see products there. You can uh, find um, all the email addresses uh, that are necessary to communicate, whether it's sales or additional information. Um, there are um, a number of links to different brands and catalogs that are available, information about the company itself and our locations. So feel free to go to www.rubies.com. Uh, if you want to find me, I'm on LinkedIn, uh, Greg Cyrulnik. Um, if you want to send me an email, it's info at gtinspires.com. Um, and um, I have a Facebook page. I have a LinkedIn. And basically, any social media that you can find, uh, I have presence there. You're out there. No, that's great. And Greg, it's awesome to sit down with you. It's great to get your uh, your takes on some of these things and hear your unique perspective. And uh, we obviously love Rubies. You know, you guys make celebrating the holidays a little bit better, uh, which we could all use right yes. now. So, so thanks so much for for joining us, Dave. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Jeff. It's uh, nice to be here. All right. Well, stay safe up there in uh, New Jersey. We appreciate you, and and thank all of you for joining us as well on Tech Talk today. We'll look forward to seeing you on our next episode.